Hi, this is uh, Pugal from Rocket Realty. I'm broadcasting using Facebook Live on February 3rd, 2018. This show is about real estate. If you have any question on real estate, whether you're buying your first home or moving to a bigger home or you're downsizing your home or you're just wanting to know the value of your current home, if you have any questions related to home improvement like bathroom, kitchen, etc., join me each week at facebook.com backward slash rocket realty tx every week on Sundays between 6 and 6 30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. In today's program, folks, we are going to discuss about three important things. Uh, we are going to talk about um, new tax laws and its impact on the housing market. I'm also going to talk about uh, local news about uh, Dallas-Fort Worth housing uh, as well as how the te Texas economy is doing and what to expect in terms of housing this year. So I'm going to talk about growth rate, I'm going to talk about what happens to mortgage, and what are experts predicting and so on. So if you have any questions uh, related to rock, uh, housing, uh, mortgage, home improvement, join me at facebook.com forward slash rocket reality TX. Time to time I will be looking at my screen to see if there is any comments or questions Therefore, um, I have a monitor, so I will be looking. Uh, there will also be a lag between about t 10 to 12 seconds uh, uh, because I'm using a Facebook live streaming technology. Okay, so let's begin today. Um, first, I wanted to talk about the new tax, new law that was uh, passed in Congress uh, and signed by President Trump on December 22nd, 2017. Okay, it is called the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Um, and specifically, I am going to discuss about uh, the impact on mortgage and housing and home improvements. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to disclose that I am not a licensed um, accountant or a chartered accountant, uh, chartered uh, CPA, um, certified public accountant. Um, so whatever information I'm giving is based on the information provided by National Association of Realtors. I'm a member of the association. So first thing I wanted to share is the mortgage interest deduction. It is called MID. Okay. So what is mortgage interest deduction? So if you are one of those folks who claim itemized deduction when you are filing the federal income tax, um, <clears throat> the new tax law says your home loan or your mortgage is limited up to $750,000. So any interest that you pay for any loans up to $750,000 are deductible, okay? Let me qualify that. Any loan, mortgage loan that you have taken after December 17th, 2017, the new law is effective, okay? This new law ends believe on December 31st, 2025, okay? So if you have taken a loan that is above $750,000 on or before December 17th, 2017, then you're automatically grandfathered in. That means any interest that you pay is deductible. But if you purchased a home and you took a loan that is below $750,000, then you can deduct. But the, what I mean is the interest that you pay. But if your loan amount is greater than $750,000 that you took on or after December 17th, 2017, 
then the interest that you pay on that mortgage is not deductible okay folks again any loan that you have taken after december 17 2017 and it is more than seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars then you cannot claim the interest that you pay on that mortgage as cannot be deducted okay so it is not allowed the fact is i have been discussing about this topic for quite some time in november um, it passed the house the congress had a different version um, what happened in the previous before it became the law the the deduction was limited by the house bill up to only five hundred thousand dollars so my association national association of realtors which i am a member of we lobbied with the congress and then increased that to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so you may be wondering what was the previous limit the previous limit where you can deduct interest on the mortgage was up to one million dollars so we fought really hard to bring it to one million dollar but we uh, finally when the version of the tax law was passed it was uh, not five hundred thousand but it came to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay so again i wanted to um, summar summarize the first point which is mortgage interest deduction uh, it is limited up to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so any loan that you have taken towards the purchase of your property it is a primary residence or your secondary home you can deduct the mortgage interest that you pay if the loan amount is less than seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay so that is the law um so you may be wondering um you know what states are impacted there are many states in the east coast as well as in the west coast are highly impacted those uh, homeowners are highly impacted because the cost of homes let's say in bay area as well as in new york new jersey certain pockets of connecticut you know they run upwards of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so that is the new law you know the impact of the new law and now i also received phone calls from a number of my clients saying pugal what if i refinanced um the old loan so i had one one million dollar or nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars i need to refinance so that i get a lower interest rate now if you had a loan you know that you open uh, borrowed let's say june of 2017 and you wanted to refinance it then as long as the new loan amount does not exceed your old loan amount um, or um, one million dollar you know the previous rule then you can refinance and you can at any time <clears throat> and the old uh, rule um, is grandfathered in so you can still deduct the mortgage interest deduction so this mortgage interest deduction limit is only applicable for new loans that you took after december 17th 2017 on either your primary home or your secondary home okay i hope we made that point very clear so in texas um the percentage of homes um which is uh, where the loan amount is greater than 750 is uh, not high uh, so in terms of our state it should not have a major impact but there are states uh, where the land and the homes are very expensive specifically on the east coast and the west coast it may have an impact in terms of housing because people might say i would rather rent uh, than buy so it may bring down the prices of higher valued homes that's my uh, prediction uh, so the third point the second point I wanted to address is home equity uh, deductions so the law also changed the home equity um, deductions 
So what I mean by home equity deductions is, so let's say if you took a home <coughs> uh, improvement loan, okay? A home equity loan to do improvements um, in the previous version of the tax bill, the interest that you paid on the home equity loan was deductible. Okay, so you can write it off. But in this new law, it specifically says that the loan that you took should be should increase or you do improvements to the residence for which you took the loan. So it means if you're adding a patio or you're extending a room or you are doing a kitchen or a bathroom remodel that increases the value of the property, then as long as it does, you can deduct the interest. However, let's say you are buying an appliance using home equity line of credit let's say a refrigerator or a washer, dryer or a stove or a vent hood, those are not deduct the interest. If you spend that money on those items, they are not deductible. So point number two deals with home equity loan deductions. So the new law <clears throat> does not permit deduction if you it doesn't increase uh, improve the residence uh, substantially okay so specifically the language deals with um, that adds value to the home uh, or home improvement okay so it's kind of a gray area uh, National Association of Realtors is saying that you know if it is going to be um, adding square footage to the home maybe you're adding a media room uh, or you are remodeling your kitchen or a bathroom or you're adding wood flooring or you know changing granite, granite countertop that adds value uh, uh, to the structure or you're putting to the real estate then it is deductible um, that's uh, the clarification um, the third point is also has significant impact on uh, on the tax that you might file for 2018 um, okay for this year now that is that has to do, do with what they call salt state and local taxes state and local taxes now in Texas in Dallas we call it as property tax you know the new law says that the property taxes when you have to go for itemized deduction if your property tax is less than ten thousand dollars then you can deduct on your federal income tax once again I repeat if your taxes property taxes is less than ten thousand dollars then you can include as itemized deduction when you file the taxes in this year okay so there is a limit up to ten thousand dollars okay state and local tax in the state of Texas we don't have a state tax instead we have property tax so you cannot deduct more if it is more than ten thousand dollars okay now this uh, again has a significant impact for uh, homeowners that are in the East Coast and the West Coast because the property tax and the state tax they are usually twenty twenty two thousand dollars because of their expensive homes so they will be significantly impacted the governors of those states are working on some uh, structures that will help the home homeowners um, so that they can have an incentive to buy um, those kind of homes right so that they can have the advantage of the state and local tax reduction so again the limit for property tax in Texas uh, when you file uh, for your taxes is going to be up to ten thousand dollars again it doesn't um, apply uh, for uh, 2017 so if you're going to file for uh, 2018 for the tax year 2017 it does not impact but when you do it for next year which is 2019 okay and you get the tax bill in December of 2018 then it may really have an impact okay now I also got a lot of calls uh, from my clients uh, specifically in December 
um, where they were uh, specifically asking me, um, this was a specific question, saying that, Pugal, is it possible for me to pay the anticipated property tax for 2018 in December of 2017 so that when I can deduct in my, uh, as an itemized deduction when I file for taxes. So, uh, so they are trying to prepay in when the law was not effective in the hopes that they can deduct. So the final bill as very specifically folks precludes the deduction of 2018 state and local income taxes prepaid in 2017. So let me read it specifically. The final bill specifically precludes the deduction of 2018 state and local income taxes that are prepaid in 2017. So folks, it's, you know, it does not work. Um, there was a lot of calls that my office received and a lot of my clients called me and asked. So if you prepaid and you think you can deduct um, you might really, really want to consult your CPA. And uh, the law clearly says you cannot do that, okay? Okay, number four, so the new law, how does it affect um, home-related uh, stuff? Uh, that is moving expenses. Uh, the law specifically says that uh, the pre previous to the enactment of this law, when you move, beyond a certain radius. The IRS had a rule, so if you move within certain, I don't know the specific number, certain miles, then any cost associated with relocation was deductible, okay? Not anymore. Um, so if you are planning to relocate, um, then you cannot, this year, you cannot deduct the uh, moving expenses. The only exception to that rule is our armed forces. You know, those who serve the country, armed forces, they can deduct, but we cannot. I mean, if you're relocating in 2018, your moving expenses is going to be three or four, five thousand dollars. You cannot deduct that in your when you file the taxes in 2019. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> number five is rental properties. There was a lot of questions to me saying because um, a lot of my clients own rental properties. So the question was, Pugala, I own multiple properties. You know, talk to me about the mortgage interest reduction as well as the property taxes. I mean, so folks, it's very, very clear. Um, <clears throat> You know, rental properties are not affected because it's a different asset. You depreciate it and you can write it off. Once again, I want to make a disclaimer that I am not a tax consultant. I am a real estate um, uh, real, uh, agent and my what I'm sharing is information that was passed by the law. If you have multiple properties, you please consult your CPA. Okay. Uh, in terms of depreciation, this was another question that was asked um, uh, by my clients. Uh, the question that was asked by my clients was um, depreciation. This was specifically, there is no impact. Uh, so if you own a residential um, property that you're renting, you can still use 27.5 uh, years um, to depreciate or a period of 27 and a half years to depreciate the value of your house uh, that you're renting. Uh, so if you have done any home improvements, let's say you renovated your property, put a wooden floor, or you put a granite countertop in the kitchen and the bathroom, you can depreciate that over a period of 15 years. That has not changed. Suppose if you owned a commercial property, non-residential, let's say you owned um, a gas station or you owned an uh, a strip center, a strip uh, shopping center. Uh, still, the law says you can depreciate that asset over a period of 39 years, and nothing has changed. So, if you own a rental property, nothing has changed, or nothing is impacted by the new tax law, folks. Okay. So, um, if uh, so, rental is a good investment uh, that has not been touched. There is also some 
other uh, areas in which you can benefit uh, from the tax law uh, specifically um, if there is a way in which you create an LLC structure and you own your rental properties um, then there is an advantage once again uh, this is something that I have read because I own uh, multiple rental properties uh, I'm talking with my CPA to see if that really makes sense to create an LLC entity uh, instead of owning the property in an individual's name. So I don't have an answer. I, I just follow what my CPA says, but uh, it appears to me that could be an advantage. Okay, so folks, um, so those are the key things that I wanted to discuss related to the new tax law. Okay. Uh, so number one, we talked about mortgage interest deduction. So the limit is up to $750,000, whether it is your primary home or your second home. We talked about home equity loan. That means it has to specifically add value to the property, uh, meaning improvements where it touches the property uh, to the structure. Okay, Anything like an appliance, um, refrigerator, if you took a home equity uh, loan, then you cannot deduct it. Number three, we talked about property tax, that is specifically the limit is $10,000. Uh, we talked about moving expenses, and these relocation or moving expenses are not deductible going forwards. Um, uh, so if you made a move uh, after uh, December um, 17th, 2017, then this tax law is, um, according to this tax law, it may not be deductible. So talk with your CPA. Then we talked about uh, rental properties. It has no impact. Okay, so with all these uh, tax um, laws, uh, what are the predictions for the year 2018? I just completed writing my blog. It should be posted tomorrow, February 5th uh, on my a rocket reality blog so I'm going to summarize my the predictions and again a lot of these data comes from National Association of Realtors uh, that is where I wanted to credit they are the source uh, I trust that I'm a member of National Association of Realtors uh, folks let me now talk specifically on the growth um, in terms of price appreciation According to National Association of Realtors Chief Economist Lawrence Yun, uh, it is anticipated the home prices will go up by 5.5%. Okay, so the home prices are likely to go up by 5.5%. Um, in last year, 2017, they went up by 7%. So when you compare from last year to this forecast, which is 2018, it is going to be the prices are going to increase at a slower rate uh, than it was in last year. <clears throat> uh, then in terms of uh, construction, new home construction, the production according to Mr. N of National Association of Realtor is 9.4%. So the construction permit uh, for new builders, you know, it is anticipated uh, to grow. I mean, in the last two weeks of Jan, I have been helping a number of my clients purchase a new home. There are certain communities in Dallas-Fort Worth um, where one community that I closely deal with, um, you know, they sold 27 homes in last week of January, folks. I mean, January is kind of winter. It is supposed to be a slow month. Usually they sell 10 homes. They sold 20, 10 homes in a month. They sold 27 homes in the last week of January. That is phenomenal. It is moving fast. A lot of these uh, new builders are uh, building homes in anticipation of a bigger demand, which means they are filling up the lots with their own inventory plans, what they think is going to sell, and they are just building homes. So if you're in the market and you're thinking, Pugal, I want to pick a plan, I want to pick a lot, and I want to uh, build my home, the probability is very less if you're looking at the home in sub $400,000 range. So uh, if you're looking at a little bit higher pricey homes, uh, then you can pick your lot, you can pick your plan, and you can build the home. 
but a lot of these uh, at the I call it as a sub 400 tier between 250 to 400 they are anticipating demand and they are going and building because they are having a tough time to hold the labor uh, a lot of the labor forces have gone to Houston uh, to for the uh, reconstruction of uh, people affected by Hurricane Harvey they make more money over there so in order to retain those uh, different labor different trades a lot of these home builders are anticipating and building ahead so if you are in the market and you're looking for a new home you know reach out to our agents at Rocket Realty or myself Pugo I will be able to help you guide you and negotiate in the right direction okay now what happens uh, in terms of um, interest rate uh, this is a very important point in terms of interest rate the interest rate um, is right now um, is about 4.1 4.2 4.25 is four one eighth of a point is where it stands 30 year mortgage the prediction is that it may go as high as 4.8 percent this year according to mortgage banker association okay so the interest rates are anticipated to go up to 4.8 percent on a 30 year fixed mortgage according to mortgage banker association folks okay so there's going to be so a higher interest rate could translate into lower activity in terms of home buying because it costs more to lend the money so it may throw off some buyers that may have an impact in the overall housing activity for this year and that's why the prediction of 5.8 percent as a uh, um, appreciation in the value of the home uh, folks I have few more things uh, we are coming very close to the hour I will try to um, you know wrap it up and <clears throat> wrap up this uh, session today um, so today we talked essentially um, on two topics which is uh, the new tax law and its impact on housing uh, second, I also talked to you about the prediction in terms of housing for 2018. All right, we are reaching on the top of the hour. I wanted to thank you uh, for listening to Rocket Radio. Uh, if you have any real estate question on uh, any real estate topic, join me each week, Pugo. Uh, at Rocket Radio so you can join using Facebook live at facebook.com forward slash Rocket Realty until I see you next week February 11th at 6 p.m. you have a great week signing off goodbye